Nine nigga, this cow skin is out skin. Nine nigga, this cow skin is out skin. Hey, what's up, guys? Brady here again. Back with another video. And I'm basically here to tell you guys about my experience with COVID-19. Damn, man, it smacked me for like a six. For those of you who know cricket terms. <laughs> I know for the Americans, it's like a home run. It like, oh, fuck. I don't even know how the hell that thing got me so bad. Yeah. But uh, basically, yeah, I got um, tested last week. I know it sounds like it was just now, but it feels like five years ago or something. Uh, last week, Thursday, and I came back positive. And uh, yeah, but the thing is, previously before that, I had had it for a week already. And um, why I got tested was because um, I was actually admitted into the hospital. Ching, ching, ching. Yeah, because of um, breathing problems. I basically couldn't breathe anymore. Um, guys, trust me, this shit is not a joke. <laughs> I thought it was a joke. And coming from a guy who's usually like, um, I don't get sick, usually, ever, actually. Um, I was actually, for, I had it for a week already before that. So I thought um, it was just flu. Because usually I'm the one saying like, you know, so I don't get sick and oh, if it's flu, I'll like maybe take off work for like a day, which I did. I took off work the first day. It was like the, the Monday before last. Let me start from the beginning. Monday before last, um, I had come off just like a regular weekend, had some friends over. We were busy maybe making some music, you know, um, drinking under lockdown we so was drinking that illegal alki and uh, yeah just basically kicking it so the monday morning i wake up and i was like damn this is crazy um all through the night i was tossing and turning and i just had that body soreness like my whole body was sore um so i thought okay this is flu kicking in um, so yeah, I just called in sick. I thought, yeah, you know, I just need a day. And um, yeah, I, I chilled. So then um, Tuesday came along and I was feeling better. So I went back to work and I proceeded to just go back to work that whole week, um, which I did. So I went to work Monday, Tuesday to Friday, and then weekend again. But the thing is, throughout the week, I was feeling a bit of the fluish symptoms, you know, so it was like a bit of this, a bit of that, but I wasn't taking anything. I don't take medicine usually for anything, so uh, if it's flu, I know it's just going to, I'm just going to get rid of it, but I'm just chilling. I'm pretty healthy and uh, yeah, uh, I just chill. So it's cool. <sighs> Come weekend, weekend comes, I'm not feeling well again. Now, the thing is with that weekend is that it was the long weekend, so um, it was uh, Monday was a public holiday it was women's day and I remember like um, you know the girls were saying yeah you know it was do something for us so you know it was gonna be a weekend like, chill with them on Sunday and whatever you know like my girl my friends go and like yeah you know it's gonna get them some child whatever. so women's day comes through well, Friday came through, chilled. Um, a friend of mine who I haven't seen for a long time came through. She came in the evening. Uh, she brought a couple of drinks. So we were drinking and you know, drinks are scarce because it was still lockdown. This is like just last week before the, before Ramaphosa opened up, before the president opened up the country to sell liquor again. So. She brought food drinks, we sipping, we chilling, we dancing, whatever, whatever, cool. Next day, I'm feeling kind of rough again. That's Saturday. So Saturday, I'm feeling kind of rough, but I'm like, all right, whatever. If I just wake up, force myself out of the bed, even though the muscles, muscles are sore, arms are sore, you know, um, kind of a tightish chest, but nothing hectic. Um, no headaches 
which is weird because I get uh, I used to get chronic migraines um, not really anymore so that's usually the first sign for me so for migraine no vomiting or funny shit diarrhea nothing like that just like the muscle soreness and um, yeah that's about it like sore throat um, or scratchy throat um, I start drinking on Saturday drink through it had some gin downing gin you know that the uh, illegal shit drinking gin on Saturdays uh, Saturday goes well that's all right Sunday again I wake up it's a bit harsh so I'm like shit I'm feeling a bit bad fine do the same thing okay I'll just get up force myself out of it and drink myself out of it so then I drink again on Sunday sip 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 feeling good Monday comes along public holiday uh, Women's Day spend it with the peeps you know and all this time the worst part is all this time i'm busy infecting the hell out of everyone because i'm kissing my girl it's like it's just a mess because i was just thinking to myself damn i'm good i hope i'm not sick because if i am i'm infecting all these people but then i didn't think i was in fact on saturday i think i took some mushrooms and i felt okay actually saturday i went and picked up my, my girl from the mall took some mushrooms um i was it the mushrooms hit me in a kind of a weird way it wasn't like a chill vibe it was a very heavy vibe like it was it was very chaotic like my my, my head felt chaotic which is when i thought now okay maybe it's just the, the shrooms you know the type of shrooms it was a different type because i couldn't get so then um yeah so i like i dropped her off whatever as I'm driving back, I started, I didn't cough the whole day, I didn't feel sick the whole day. As I'm driving back on Saturday from dropping off the girl, I start coughing like uncontrollably. And my friends had already called me and they were waiting for me here in my apartment because I had given them the key and everything. Because we had to discuss like a business thing, so they were waiting for me here. As I came back, I just felt oh, shit, this thing just released. It's almost like immediately I dropped the chick off. It released. I don't know if it's because of my interview. I was like, I'm not gonna show him coughing or anything. But anyway, I told her. I told her I had to. And she actually said to me, No, I've got an elderly dad, so watch it. And then, um, yeah, I started coughing uncontrollably. And my mates were here, so I'm like, you know what? Like, <clears throat> like I couldn't stop coughing, so I put on a mask. And then we started discussing the business thing and like maybe an hour into it, I just was like done. Like I couldn't handle it. And I wasn't even drinking that day. It was mostly shrooms. I was just out of it. Like I felt so sick. So I told them, James, you chill, you finish the discussion, whatever. I'm actually going to tuck in. I'm going to crash. So I crashed. Sunday morning, I felt much better. I was cool. Almost back to normal. I mean, yeah, back to normal. That's when we drank, whatever, whatever. Um, Monday again, yeah, Women's Day, so we just chilled and kicked it. Um, Tuesday, wake up feeling a bit, a bit funny, you know, the usual body pains, body aches, scratchy throat, a slight cough, but there's phlegm coming out, so it's not a dry cough, and you know, they've been saying dry cough, and I was getting fever, but only during the evening, as I'm tossing and turning, so it wasn't like, a recorded, recorded the fever, or recorded fever, it was like I felt fever, like I felt it. So only during the night, and when I, when I wake up and I take a shower, and then it's back to normal. So that's Tuesday morning, and I'm like, okay, cool, this is cool enough for me to go to work. I'll go to work. My boss had known I was sick already the previous week, but they thought I had flu. So he's like, how are you feeling? And I'm like, no, chill. And he's like, you're still coughing. And I'm like, yeah, it's only the tightness of chest that's left. And he's like, COVID. And he's like, but don't worry, you're strong so you'll make it and i think he was just like you know making a joke about it but i was like all right cool whatever so so it's a joke you know whatever hmm. tuesday evening the thing with work is that i was running up and down i i work on the on the second floor and like there's a bottom floor where all the cars and everything are kept because i like we brand cars and like um we customize cars and stuff so i was running down you know going to check on the lambo check on this thing run back up name dropping cars which i don't even own go downstairs check on the cars measure run back up go downstairs run back up go downstairs run to the other side of the factory run back run back run back 
I was chill. Only thing I noticed is for the first time, I was running out of breath when I was running up and down there, which was like weird for me because like, I was like, that's something I'm like super fit. Like I'm probably like, I'm pretty fit, fittest person I know. I, I would say I'm the fittest person in the entire world. It's just that, um, yeah, no, I'm the fittest person in the entire world. So then I was like, oh, uh, this is weird. Um, why am I, you know, why is it like, why am I running out of breath, a bit of shortness of breath, whatever. Come back home, sleep, night time comes. Monday, uh, Tuesday night. Here's where shit got real, buddy. That same evening, when, okay, before I slept, my friend came over, so he, 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 he cycled over, so he just asked me to drop him home. When I dropped him home, I was like, it's cool, but then when I was driving back, as well, again, the drive back, I started, start coughing, start coughing. By the time I'm back, I'm like, feeling like shit. So I come back, feeling like shit. I don't even eat, I don't do nothing. I just switch off all the fucking lights in my place, and I just dive straight into the sheets. Ooh, that night was hectic, man. Like, I, I still can't remember that night. It's like, uh, it's blur, it's blurs, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I was like in and out of consciousness. Like, um, I'm up, I'm fucking sweating through all my clothes and through my bed sheets and fucking my chest is tight, I'm coughing. And then I go, then I'm back again, I'm sleeping again, then I'm up again. That morning I woke up and I was thinking, damn, okay, I'm probably going to be late for work because I'm going to have to recover from this shit somehow. Just get up and like, maybe like do a couple of exercises, you know, do some belly juice workouts or something. Or um, Yano Fitness, which is Rodney's um, show. You should check that out. Yano Fitness. That's a, that's a really good um, fitness routine with Ama Piano. It's very uh, it's unique. Yeah, so I'm thinking I'm just going to do a quick routine, you know, get my shit back together. Well... Different plans, bruh. Different plans. I fucking could not get out of the bed. It was weird because when I lay on my side, I can breathe easier. But then my whole body is like fucking sore. It was like working together like the, the, the body and the, the, the lungs. The muscles and the my body muscles and my lungs were working together against me <laughs> like them versus me so when i lay on my side the body muscles are sore the legs are sore the waist is sore the chest is sore but i can breathe easier when i lay on my back it's harder to breathe but then i'm relieved of a bit of uh the soreness so what i do is i get up and i'm like no fuck this i had already had flu gotten flu medicine Funny enough, the week before that backtrack, I went to the doctor and I actually went and saw the doctor and she said it's, everything looks like COVID. So she just prescribed some antibiotics, flu sin, flu medicine, uh, painkillers and uh, stuff for fever, pain and fever. So I'd been taking that every day, which I think is what convinced my body. Like I was just numbing myself the whole week, I think. But really like I was getting worse and worse. So I get up and I can't even literally like here's my desk and here's where all the medicine was and my bed is like right here but like i couldn't even get to my fucking bed it's a meter like one and a half meters i couldn't even get you like to my i couldn't reach my, my medicine i'm reaching my medicine i get up I, I sit down and you know when you're sick and you sit and it's like you're super sensitive so the, the little cold from the chair is like it's like sharp pain and like you know so I'm trying to, I'm trying to make myself some med lemon because I'm like, I need to open up my chest because at this point now I can't breathe. Now it's like George Floyd levels, I can't breathe. RIP, um, yeah, so I'm like, trying to breathe, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to breathe, I'm trying to breathe. I, I managed to walk to the kitchen, uh, switch on the kettle, pour some med lemon, drink that, still not helping. I'm, I'm. How can let me describe the, the not being able to breathe for you? It's each time you pull, it's like your breath is right at the top here of your lungs, right below here where your opening of your like uh, esophagus. Um, so it's like as you pull in air, it allows only a bit of air, and then it's like 
that the little air that you does that does get in reacts and it makes you cough. So you <coughs> and it's like each time you try and breathe in, you cough, and each time you cough, it's like really painful. So here's where I started getting worried because I'm like I can now understand how people die from this thing. The first time I realized, okay, shit, I can die now, is as I'm trying to catch my breath and the more I pull it in the more I cough so it's like it'll reach at a certain point here and then it's almost like the whole pathway is closed like it's not gonna go any further and if I try and force it there's this pain sharp pain and there's like some it's like there's obviously phlegm and like little fluids and whatever lodged in there so it was stopping it so slowly but surely the more I pull in and the more I try and force it, the more I'll cough, and then I'll cough out a bit of the fluid. But now, each time that happens, instead of getting looser, it was getting tighter. So it got to the point where my, my, my breaths were almost like... <coughs> <coughs> and that's when I was like, nah, this is crazy. I get on the phone, I send my mom a message. My mom's a nurse, so I was like, let me just see what she's gonna say. I say, Hey mom, each time I breathe in, and funny enough, she was checking on me because she 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 kept saying like, just watch out, watch out for this um, this flu things uh, that you got, whatever, whatever. Since you're coughing and flame and stuff, so I was like, so I asked, I'm like, each time I breathe in, I cough, so I can't breathe now. I have shortness of breath. What should I take? It goes to WhatsApp, so it goes to like one take or something. I think she it was great take. Um, then I highlight my sister because she also usually knows stuff or just guesses but anyway you know better than nothing so I highlight her and she's like um, don't even highlight mom don't highlight me just get the help to the clinic right now so at this point I'm like I don't know if I can even drive this is how bad it is so I'm like I don't, I don't think I can drive luckily enough just then my mom called and she's like you know what okay cool I'm gonna come through and then we can go to the clinic together. Problem is she was at work, so I was thinking how long is this gonna take for her to come all the way here and then we go all the way together and I don't know if I'm gonna survive. Then I remembered that when I lie on my side, I could breathe and that's one of the only things that saved me. So I was like, okay, cool. I can't breathe right now, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lie on my side and sleep and wait until my mom comes. As I get on my side, the same thing happens. Muscles go sore, but I can breathe away from my mom. I don't know how long it was. I remember she took quite a while because I kept thinking, damn, man, I would have been dead if this was like, you know, if I wasn't like industrious and like, uh, if, like, you know, if I wasn't like a quick thinker as well, if I wasn't like just fighting the shit out of it. Um, anyway, she arrives. <laughs> this is like the weirdest thing. She arrives. I get up. I go. I go put on like some, like a hoodie and whatever. I'm walking out and I don't know how long I closed my eyes for, how much oxygen deprivation there was, but everything when I just opened the door was white. <laughs> it's like I've never seen some shit like that. I was like, this is how the last bit before you die must be. It was as if it was almost like, the world was black and white and I think I was walking so fucked up because my neighbor was like shouting Fred and I'm looking back and I couldn't even like I could hardly breathe or talk or walk but she still wants to you know and I was still what's that what's wrong well, are you right and I'm like I'm coming and I'm like, what I'm coming and what fuck you know <laughs> but anyway so <laughs> everything went white like everywhere the sun was touching was like exaggerated it was like a freaking effect from premiere pro or something adobe or some shit and then the rest looked black like all well, grayish that's how that's how bright everything else was because everything else looked grayish so it almost looked like oh, i was looking at everything through black and white and i walked all the way out of my complex into my mom's car and i think it took it literally took like a good five minutes for my for like the eyesight to stabilize and for me to get back to normal and I was worried actually that that would that I wouldn't because I was like shit maybe there's some sh other shits going down here anyway we drive to the clinic she asked me should we go to the government hospital because she's like they're gonna have to book you in and I'm like shit and this is where I say niggas get your fucking 
medical aid and other shit together get that shit fucking sorted quickly man this is like the first and last time that i'm ever gonna fucking be in a government hospital not that i'm kicking it or knocking it or anything to be honest they helped quite a lot but a lot of it was because i was i was i had covid if i was something else i you know surgery they would have probably replaced my leg or something just from my not being able to breathe i don't i hear some shit you know this is the stories you hear but anyway yeah she asked me do you want to go to the government hospital i'm like nah fuck going to medicross yeah well where we usually go and it's a private clinic but the thing is she's like well if they try if they have to book you in it's going to be like 20 grand you know off the bat you just need 20 grand and then lord knows how long you're going to stay there or whatever but i'm like fucking let's just go there which is a good idea which was the good choice to make because when i went there they did an extra everything they said okay oh dude you got it um, we don't even need to test, but we can call the government hospital and then we can Luckily my mom knows She know I told you she's a nurse, but so she knows the, our doctor and everything So she called the government hospital and she asked them to book me in in advance Without them needing a test. Otherwise if you go straight to the government hospital, they're gonna be like, okay We need you to test first. We don't even know if you've got COVID and then we need you to stand in line We need you to do whatever and like thank god it's actually been it's actually quiet now because it was it was lockdown level three so things were quiet so and there also wasn't any cues so yeah we get to the so basically yeah that was like a hack like went to the private clinic just paid for the consultation and x-rays and then they called the government hospital and got me a easier book in so when i went to the government hospital they like has he been tested and I was like, nah, I haven't been tested, um, but the x-rays show that I have, apparently I had, and here's the crazy part, apparently I had pneumonia and COVID, so it had like started uh, spreading through my chest and all of that shit, and that's why the breathing was so fucked. So, yeah, they booked me in, um, when I get to the government hospital, they do all that they ask me <laughs> the guy was asking such freaking funny questions <laughs> then i've got covid so he's like how can i help you so i'm like well i don't know then he's like then i'm like well i have shortness of breath and he's like oh there we go why are you like so he was just basically trying to ascertain like the symptoms <laughs> i don't know why they just lost but anyway they asked me that like 10 times that's another problem each person who comes to you asks you what are the symptoms? Each person, I swear, like 10 times. It's like 10 different people do 10 different things. But anyway, they do the test. Fuck, the test is crazy. Woo! Uh, like my eyes watered, both of them. Like they put it up one nose. It's like it's a little sharp little swab. And it's not as, it doesn't like reach your brain or anything. They exaggerate, but it's freaking invasive. It just touches touches a little tip there which is not supposed to be touched by anything else outside not supposed to be touched by any foreign bodies i promise as it touches there's our waters as the other one touches there's our waters you know, so. yeah but anyway luckily the woman takes my um uh oxygen levels and that's what showed them because they were like you look fine for the most part because you know i'm healthy and whatever so at that point i shoved in all the all the flu medicines and stuff so at that point i had stabilized a bit but she's like you look a bit you he looks healthy that's the weird part they're talking amongst each other i'm right there they're like but he doesn't look like he's uh, he needs whatever you know he needs um hospitalization whatever whatever then they take my they put the little clip the little general electric clip um and um yeah i think the oxygen was like on 87 or something like that Oh, I don't know what number that stands for, the 87, but like, they're like, oh, he's an 87, so yeah, he's going to have to be hospitalized. So they say, okay, well, basically, we're going to hospitalize you, um, and we're just going to put you on oxygen. Um, you're healthy, so, I mean, that's all we're going to have to do. That's all we can do until you feel better, and then, yeah, we can let you go. Next day, fast forward, that was a crazy night. Woke me up at 4 o'clock in a room full of crazy guys there was one guy who kept shouting nurse nurse <laughs> he was funny he was like nurse hey nurse <laughs> there's always the one eh? there's always the one shouting 
<laughs> the nurses are coming around giving us masks. <laughs> he goes, hey nurse, nurse. Not to make fun of someone in distress or anything. Hey nurse. Then he's like, you got masks. He's like, how much? You're selling masks, how much? <laughs> oh, he killed me. Nurse, prank it. <laughs> he's saying, Bracket, bracket, let's <laughs> give me a bracket. And he didn't stop. I'm just, right now, he's probably still shouting something. But yeah, so then, yeah, so first night I was in like a room full of like, yo, it was like, yo, you know, characters like shady. I don't want to say shady characters, it just was like a shady ish room. Um, and then they came, and the next morning to each of us, and this like hot, I could tell she was hot, even though they all wearing masks. That's the only drawback but like she she's telling each of us um uh, our results and i think it was only like three of us who were positive actually for covid the rest were like i, I was like what you not you positive now because you like they put us in all in the same room but anyway yeah so the rest were negative for covid so which is where the luck comes in because then we got we got moved to presidential presidente um our own suites uh which is where i was like damn man this is like because if if that's why i said just because of covid because otherwise they would have put us with everyone else um they didn't even want to give me oxygen that morning funny enough in that room they were like why do you need oxygen and i'm so i'm like oh fuck this i'm gonna just lie i'm like hey uh yeah i'm struggling to breathe whatever whatever they give me an oxygen tank then when I go to the toilet, I forgot to switch it on. And she's like, you see, other people need it. But anyway, yeah. So they put us in our own suites. Uh, because obviously this isolation rooms. And uh, that's where I pretty much spent the rest of my four or five days. I think that was like Wednesday. Yeah, got uh, put in there on Wednesday. And, uh, and I came out Monday, which was just now like uh, two days back. Well, no, today's Thursday, so three days back. And uh, yeah, but uh, Koala was there, they put me on a drip, um, I forgot and I'll get you guys the name of what was in that drip, and then um, each day they used to give you like a little shot, a little injection, a small little injection to the tummy three times a day, um, that was just for anti-clotting because apparently it's your blood clots or something when you're, and then they'd, when you got cold, but it also gave us like little, like two, three little pills, um, I don't know what they were. One looked like vitamin C, now that I've got vitamin C. And then um, probably like Panado, uh, painkillers and something, something. Yeah, so that's what they were getting every day. And then like, you know, luckily, you know, three meals a day. Um, I snuck in some food. Luckily, my sister snuck me in some food. So I was just chowing that. My appetite took a while to return but it's back and so is my sense of smell and my sense of taste the worst part is when they say your taste goes it's not like your taste goes completely it's that it's just it's like you have this specific taste it makes everything taste bad even water like i couldn't taste I couldn't like i don't want to drink it covid is a weird little um it's like i swear it was created you can tell it's created in a lab somewhere because it makes everything work against each other like where yeah, it's like it's, it works so smart like it makes you not want to eat not want to um move around a lot it, fucking you're so sore you can't move you can't breathe it's like jesus christ it's like just you just melt down man but yeah so that was that and um yeah i was basically on oxygen which I found is like the new fucking cure, man. I swear, I'm going to, like, I, while I was in there, I was Googling, like, oxygen tanks because there were, came a point where I was so clear-headed, like, not, 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 not like, um, foggy or not, like, clear, like, you know, but, like, clear-headed, like, focused. Like, it came a point where I started writing, like, a book and shit. And, it, yeah, I'm going to, well, I'm still going to write that. God, um... The concept is God, God gravity, God's gravity. I already had it before, but I was like, a, I came to a point where I was so clear, like so focused. And I think it's because I was on all that, all that oxygen. And um, yeah, breathing techniques are important.
Yeah, so yeah, so basically I'm still gonna write the book God's Gravity. Um I don't wanna plug it right now, but basic concept is um just like gravity, if you know gravity is a field, it's a force, it's a field and um everything has one. So even us as a human being has this tiny little gravitational field where we attract things obviously because we create a dent in uh, space um, and time but um yeah it's basically about how to how to use that um okay but anyway back to the back to the topic at hand yeah so basically how i kept myself entertained when i was in locked in there it was like i was locked up and i was in lockdown damn okay i mean i called my boss so he was pretty chilled about it i just told him all the symptoms and what so he warned everyone at work um and i just basically i had um and i'm not sponsored by this or anything i'm just telling y'all scribed it's a app on my phone called scribed um it's for books ebooks audiobooks um, there's sheet music on there not that I read sheet music or can read sheet music but like yeah um, I just know shit music you know? that's what I do know how shit music sounds <laughs> um, uh, and uh, yeah there's like newspaper clippings all kinds of stuff in there but obviously audiobooks are my thing um, you just need airtime there wasn't any Wi-Fi no in the government hospital sorry so that's where I spent most of my cash when I was in there you don't really need any cash for anything so yeah so yeah scribe um I, re I read i'll just say read but listen to this audiobook called lit life and usually when on when i'm on scribe if you go through my history you'll see it's mostly like um self-help um uh, science sometimes but it's like it's usually non-fiction but like this time i was like let me just indulge myself because yeah i was going through it man so i was like um oh, yeah, um, uh, listen to all this audiobook called Lit Life uh, by Kurt Wenzel. That's really good. It's like about, um, I think it's based in the 80s or something, but it's about writers, um, uh, book writers. Uh, it's about these two book writers, um, uh, mainly these two book writers. One is younger, he's in, I think he's 33, and the other guy's like 64. So they almost like double their age and they just it's just a story about how the older guy made it a bit he oh the younger guy had one hit um when he was 24 he's like a college dropout or whatever but he had one hit with the book when he was 24 and now he's like in new york's upper crust high society book writers and everything and like uh, now he's trying he's struggling to get back to that and then there's the older guy who had a couple of no more um, good books but not no big hit and no like major celebrity splash so he's so they, they meet you know they like meet and meet up and everything they have the same um manager and stuff like that but uh, yeah it's really good it's like it's very interesting very very interesting very well written it's written in like classic american style like a hemingway style like very straightforward blunt um way which i like uh, yeah, I read a, and uh, those other few things I read, like other classic American short stories. A lot of them were like very negative, man. Because the, <laughs> the funny part was at the point where I was listening to some of them, um, I didn't know like what is going on all up in here. So I was like, a lot of them ended in death. Like that was the one night where all of them were ending in death. And I'm like, fuck. And you know me, I don't like. I believe in like energies and vi and vibrations and like you can stay in this field or that field so it's like if you're trying to get better it's, you ain't supposed to be listening to like death death and the next one goes death and i was like shit this is trying to send me a message or what anyway so yeah that was that um also saigon that was all right that story but i just did like the first i think the first chapter and um yeah hemingway the, the old man in the sea i think i got through like a few words and then I fell asleep i was falling in and out of sleep a lot you like sleep a lot yeah because i think it was the the pneumonia that made me so tired like every day like i was sleeping a lot because that's another thing i don't do is sleep like i don't sleep during the day and stuff like that it's not in my character nature you know, just my demeanor so 
Um, yeah, I was doing a lot of that. And um, yeah, um, for the most part that I was there, I was I was getting better and better. But when I, I, I noticed that as long as I'm in my bed, I'm cool. But as soon as I get up off my bed and I stand, oof, the, the heaviness in the chest was like, it was like almost unbearable. And um, it's like standing somehow made my chest, like I couldn't even breathe properly. Um, later on walking to the actual toilet it was like i was like like i would walk to the toilet and i'd be out of breath and it's like a couple of steps like you can count them like 25 steps 26 steps so there was the one night it was in the morning morning in the morning uh early early, early afternoon i just got up and i was like okay i need the bathroom so i walked to the bathroom and usually like when i'm going there like I have the shortness of breath because I'm standing and I'm walking but then I just you know and then walk walk I sort of like be breathing right on the top of my chest cavity like it'll be, it'll be like right there like I won't be taking in deep breaths and, I, and I'll be like out of breath because then I just I have to like sit and then lean to the side use the bathroom and then stand up again and then run back or walk back stroll or limp back to the my room and then um, get on my bed and get on the oxygen because I'll be out of breath but this time as I got to the bathroom the oxygen just flat went went like all left so um, I'm panicking now here I am looking down at the bath at the toilet <laughs> the little breaths aren't working it's gone completely now and I'm just like fuck here it's like you know what well, it was more of a, it wasn't a moment of I'm gonna die here or I'm gonna live here. It was a moment of I can either allow this body to keep doing this shit or I can just tell it to fuck off. Because usually, like, I'm mind over matter. I'm like, that's my, that's my whole vibe. So I was just like, you know, fuck it. And I just pulled in through my tummy. And, um, I almost bypassed my lungs so you know how they say you're supposed to breathe anyway it's like good breathing from music and for everything else like you breathe through the stomach but i was i couldn't really do it properly because you have to go through it has to pass chase cavity then get to but this time i just like sort of um how, how do i put it almost like pulled in my my stomach if there's anyone out there struggling at home just sort of like pull in your stomach it's a good way to bypass it um to almost tell your body to bypass it without having to think about like breathing because when you think about it then it goes through your natural thing space you pull in just like pull in pull in pull in your little pull in your stomach so it's like but no breathing no you see just tuck in your stomach tuck in your stomach you should be able to physically see your stomach being tucked in so yeah. yeah you know so that's what i did and that pretty much was my hack because after that i was able to stand uh that's when i really started getting better the final piece of my getting better because then i was able to stand literally there and then like i was like <laughs> and then i realized okay i can breathe like this Whew, i can actually catch the i could actually catch conserve the breath and use it to actually walk you don't realize how much breath is actually helpful in your body jeez it's such a i know it's an involuntary um mechanism but jeez you know even subconscious and whatever but anyway so yeah i used it walked to my room and realized damn let me see how far let me see how good this is um i went and stood by the window nothing chill 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 from there on i was out so yeah, that's basically how I hacked breathing, hacked COVID. Yep. Swordfish bitch. Yeah. <laughs> nah. So yeah, that's basically how I hacked the breathing part in that. From there on, I was actually pretty good because then at least I could um, stand, walk, and yeah. And that's yeah, that's basically my little um, my little experience there with COVID nineteen. It is not a joke, nope. And especially if you develop pneumonia 
Mas esto es otro día de balance, collapse, lang, whatever, but I looked at my x-ray report, I don't see nothing like that. It just said like, it had um, signs of pneumoniatic uh, lungs, so yeah. Um, and um, yeah, that's basically my journey and I, I like to thank everyone from the hospital, um, what's it called? Oh, Tumbo. Tumbo Memorial Hospital. Um, I'd like to thank everyone from my medical aid that I'm gonna get now. Uh, now that I'm out, as soon as I'm, I'm not, uh, right now I'm on self isolation as I'm doing this. So, but as soon as I'm out of here, I'm getting a fucking medical aid, and I'd like to thank my mom, my sister, everyone who was there for me. Um, my girl, um, people were sending me messages left, right, and center from Zambia, and it's crazy. So, yeah, at least you know people love you. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, now I'm just been making, I've been making a few experimental tracks. It's really helped me think, though. This isolation shit, like, it's really put me in a different space. Like, I haven't been this um, creative in a while. So, yeah, the only thing I wish I could have still uh, keep from there is the oxygen tank. <laughs> Fuck, man, that I swear to God, I'm gonna get one. Um, uh, that's another hack. Like. I think if you just live on that thing, like your your mind will like regenerate back to when you were younger. Because I sometimes I feel like I've got ADD or something. Like my focus is so if I've got such a good I know I've got such a good brain, like the good hardware, but like it's just like fuck, you have to reboot, you know. So like my RAM is used and I just always have to re reboot. I need like um Yeah, I think I'm gonna get that oxygen tank. Like a little small and I can refill. Very really for those things. Anywho, um, yeah. So, stay tuned. I mean, keep, please like and subscribe the video. I hope it helped in some way. Um, just remember, if you start feeling um, shortness of breath, um, scratchy throat, even if you're coughing, even if it's a productive cough, that's a turn my leg. That means that something actually comes out. It still can count, especially if it's blood. Which was what was happening with me, like streaks of blood, but that was pneumonia. Um, uh, body aches, um, and then like obviously sensitivity to temperature. It, it doesn't have to be a fever, but like just sweats, cold night sweats and stuff like that. And um, yeah, just get yourself checked out. And if you want a free test, another test hack is um, I got a free test because I had to go. Is um, wait until you can't breathe and you're about to die go to a normal clinic private clinic just to consult normal consultation tell them hey listen i can't afford here so please send me to the hospital when they send you to the hospital they'll give you a free test yes <laughs> otherwise no fuck it don't do that don't even do that disclaimer i did i'm not promoting that kind of shit and um yeah just test properly so i don't going through that thing which is expensive but anyway um yeah so keep riding man keep riding like and subscribe for free